Yeah, praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> it's time to receive our week, amen, our world missions offering. Amen. So we want you to give as God directs you to help our missions department to spread the gospel around the world. Amen. We're reaching 30 some countries and influence on others. And we want to be a part of the ones that spread the gospel to Jesus comes back. So give us missions if you will. Amen. Get all excited and go and tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. I said, get all excited and go tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. I said, get all excited and go and tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. Jesus Christ is still the King of Kings. Get all excited and go tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. Get all excited and go tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. I said, get all excited and go tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. Christ is still the King of Kings. Did we have any birthdays this last week or today? Any birthdays? I don't see any finger pointing at all today. <laughs> Did we have any wedding anniversaries this last week or today? None of that either. All right, we'll turn it over to the <laughs> <laughs> Adult class, forty-one present, seventeen dollars and thirty-one cents offering. All right, we really appreciate everybody coming and being in school and church with us. Uh it's like uh that's the scripture today. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so much you the daily prophets of the word before you. So Jesus said, I'm going to speak to you about this first few that the first few and uh, people are going to look at you, people are watching you, and seeing how you're doing every day. And they every once in a while they meet up with you. And if you don't show that Christian life, they're going to look. They're going to have something to say about it. And so let's keep that light shining bright. And uh, the old song I used to hear years ago says, You can't be a beacon if your life don't shine. Be a beacon. Young adult, seven friends at nine dollars fifty six cents offering. He said, "On our birth, we're going to do on our birth sixteen. Let your light so shine before me, and let they see your good works. The Lord find your problems." Teen boys, nine friends at two dollars offering. We're going to do Matthew five and six. Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Primary three friends at eight dollars offering. Card class three present one dollar offering. Nursery four present two dollars offering. Who got the banner today? <laughs> Got the primary got the whole. Praise the Lord. God is good, isn't he? And all the time. Amen. Everybody uh, that made it out to the uh, youth rally, enjoy it. Amen. That's quite a few folks that was here. I think it was probably 
right over over 80 brother Ronnie said so it was quite quite a few so had a good time and um had a good fellowship afterwards and I guess Tori Corey can tell you about the uh the late night stuff they made it <laughs> praise the Lord so thank you everybody that um was able to come and help amen and and make that a success amen praise the Lord for that uh tomorrow night brother Ronnie said is discipleship class so those that are um, trying to go through the discipleship program, learn uh, more uh, how to be a better disciple. That's tomorrow night at 7.30. Amen. And Brother Ronnie has another announcement in a little bit. But uh, So any other announcements that I might have missed? All right. Did you want to do your other announcement now? Yeah. Okay. It's on the bulletin board, but in case you don't look at the bulletin board, uh, this coming Saturday... Uh, is the Jessica Savage uh, Festival or Sing Amen and uh, there'll be it starts at 4 o'clock from 4 to 6 there'll be different choirs from the area Amen will be singing and uh, there'll be uh, a great time in the Lord but each one's supposed to sing one song and then go to a, another Amen so uh don't forget and, and come by here at 4 o'clock. You're going to hear some good choir, spiritual singing from churches in this area. All right? From 4 to 6. How many is going to forget it? But be here. I believe we'll be blessed. Amen. 4 to 6 Saturday. Amen. Brother Ronnie might end up drafting some folks. Amen. <laughs> But Bring the T-bone steak to eat first. Uh, <laughs> now I got a crowd coming. <laughs> I thank the Lord for a safe trip back, and we'll go ahead and um, ask Brother David to close in this going prayer. Amen. Tom, we appreciate our visitors for Sunday school. Yes. We appreciate y'all coming. Every one of you that's here visiting, come back next week and help us build our Sunday school. Amen. And let us be the ones that's going up in Sunday school until the closing. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Time, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. I think it's a long Sunday school lesson, doesn't it? Amen. Let your light so shine before men. They may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. All right, we'll go ahead. Uh, we got an urgent request down the middle. All right, over to my left. Urgent request. All right, uh, over on this side, right. Another urgent need over here. I want to thank all those that was praying for um, Linda. Uh, my sister, she came through her surgery um, well, and uh, just keep praying for her that the Lord will have his way and will work in her life. Amen. Um, a friend, family, somebody that's lost, you want to raise a hand for that lost loved one. Amen. The Lord knows and sees that. Amen. Uh, maybe you or someone you know that has been sick that needs a touch in their body. Amen. The Lord knows who that hand represents. Uh, others that have been traveling or that's traveling right now. Amen. Amen. And then maybe you need not mention there. The Lord knows what those hands represent. Let's take all these needs to the Lord in prayer. Pray for the service today that the Lord's will be done. Amen.
with Sister Brenda in the choir. Come on, everybody that will. Let's fill it up today. turn to page 180. I like this song because it's going to be heaven in itself. Everybody's going to be happy. That's going to be a miracle in itself. No more grumbling, no more complaining, no more fault finding. Everything's going to be perfect, Brother Tommy. And I'm looking forward to that day when we don't hear none more of that stuff that's calls from the devil. That's where it's coming from. Let's be honest. There's a happy land of promise over in the grave beyond Where the saint of earth shall soon the glory share Where the souls of men shall enter and live on forevermore Everybody will be happy over there Everybody will be happy, will be happy Everybody will be happy over there 
Mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers will be sitting around the throne. In that land where no one ever knows the care. And the Christians of all ages will join in the triumph song. Everybody will be happy over there. Everybody will be happy, will be happy over there. We will shout and sing God's praise. Everybody will be happy over there. We will hear nobody praying, no mourning in that land for the burdens that will be for us to that's going to be heaven to be among of folks where everybody is happy amen. Amen. amen where everybody is happy amen you think you it, it doesn't take you long you can go to the grocery store you can go uh, walk your neighborhood sometimes even come to church and you're going to find people that aren't happy but when we get there amen everybody is going to be happy Praise the Lord. Won't that be heaven? Amen. God is good, isn't he? Amen. Thomas, if you would go ahead and ask a blessing. Lord, thank you for allowing us back to the crowd to worship you, Lord. Bless us often that we can continue to worship you, Lord. Bless those who have done. Amen.
thank you to all of those, like Brother Tommy said, that helped at the youth rally. Um, Brother Tommy just came back from his work job and came right in and just worked. And I appreciate all that Brother Tommy and his family are doing. Also want to thank Mitch and the boys, Samuel and, and um, Gabe, for helping me yesterday. Um, not me. They did the work. Um, you go out back and look and see how good it looks. I thank them for doing that work. Um, we had inspections last week, and we had a lot of things that we have to get took care of. But just pray that the Lord will just give us favor with these people that are giving inspections. <laughs> especially the health department. So we're just uh, in a battlefield, but we're going to keep fighting. Praise God. One more announcement I keep forgetting. But tonight, I'd do everything I could to be here tonight. There's a Baptist pastor over in Stark that has received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Brother Shane Morton. He's a young man, only in his 20s. And... Uh, He's, I asked him to come back. He gave a little bit of his testimony in revival. And he's coming back tonight to give his testimony and preach. And I tell you, if you know anybody that's seeking the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I'm talking about the real baptism of the Holy Ghost. I ain't talking about the counterfeit. Be here tonight. You bring them tonight. I'm looking for a mighty move of God here tonight with Brother Shane. Fine young man. Amen. And uh, so remember that. Make a special effort to be here. Bring somebody with you as Brother Shane is scheduled to be with us. I have to say I enjoyed that Sunday school lesson this morning. Brother was talking about how people are praying more now for what's going on in Washington to deceive than what they've ever prayed. And I tell you what, growing up, I'm glad I had them praying people for me. People who were taking me to church and leading me. Proverbs 22 says, train up the child in the way of the Lord. He might depart, but he'll come back. And guess what? Here I am. But I'm glad I had somebody that was willing to pray through and touch the Lord for me. My soul was sick and dying. I was bound by sin and shame. Somebody called upon the Lord, the sweet redemption came. Somebody held me up to God when I was feeling down. I'm so glad that somebody prayed, cause I can sing it now. Somebody got another prayer through, somebody touched the Lord. Somebody knock. 
You're staring at a mountain You know you must climb Your steps have grown weary And your heart filled with rest For there's nothing behind you We're turning around Our home's up ahead so don't fear the mountain, oh, but that's the way home. All of heaven is waiting at the end of the road. My God said you can make it, so I'll keep pressing on. So don't fear the mountain Oh, for that's the way home His grace is sufficient No, the road is so steep Just over the next hill The home lights will see so don't feel discouraged And don't fear the climb Cause you're gonna make it All the way home God's on your side So don't fear the mountain Oh, but that's the way home all of heaven is waiting at the end of the road. My God said you can make it, so I'll keep pressing on. So don't fear the mountain, oh, that's the way home. His grace is sufficient No, the road is so steep Just over the next hill The home lights will see So don't feel discouraged And don't fear the climb Cause you're gonna make it all the way home God's on your side So don't fear the mountain Oh, for that's the way home All of heaven is waiting At the end of the road My God said you can make it so I'll keep pressing on so don't fear the mountain oh but that's the way home don't fear the mountain oh but that's the way home all of heaven is way at the end of the road My God said you can make it So I'll keep pressing on So don't fear the mountain Oh, for that's the way home My family, their their daughter, I forget her name, Sandy, wrote that song. And they're to be with us. They're scheduled to be with us March the 8th in uh, Revival. We pray that Sister Reed is able to come and they'll be able to do the Revival. But she was inspired to write that. And give me just about five minutes. But she was inspired to write that song, Don't Fear the Mountain from a battle in World War II. And they was uh, pinned down, the American forces, allies, and 
They had to take this mountain to win the battle for that island or wherever they was at. And one of the soldiers spoke up and says, we've got to take that mountain to help us win this war that we can go home. And they put it to a song. Don't fear the mountains. They're coming. They're there. Just remember, they're on your way home. <laughs> Somebody raise, raise God. There you with those mountains, just look at them as, as something you got to climb on your way home. Amen. The, in, uh, there was an island, a volcanic island called uh, Iwo Jima in the Pacific. And uh, the American forces and Allied forces, they wanted that island. Because they could land planes and refuel and bomb and invade Japan, the homeland of Japan. And they needed that. It was just so strategically located, they needed that. But on that volcanic mountain or island was a mountain called, what I just said in my mind. And I feel anyhow. Amen. And uh, it was it was a high point of the island, and we was losing thousands of Marines and soldiers trying to take uh, some Bachi Mountain. Here, Bachi, right? Thank you. And uh, we'd already lost thousands, but they needed it. They said if we was to invade Japan, we'd lose a million soldiers invading the homeland. But the atomic bomb was developed and Truman chose to drop it on Hiroshima and Nagasaki and ended the war. We didn't have to invade the land as their enemy, just take it over. But the reason I'm saying this, they fought hard to get to the top of that mountain. And once they got there, there was still many below dying. But some forces had made it to the top of that mountain. And they took the American flag, and you've seen it on stamps and posters, where about six of them, the military, grabbed a hold of a post, pole, put the flag on it, and they were racing it. Some of y'all have seen that picture. They used it on war bonds during World War II to encourage. They put it on stamps for a long time. They were, and they said when that flag was raised and all them Marines and soldiers was down below and they could see that flag. <laughs> said they went a shout all over that there, all over that island. Hope rang. Come on, our flag is flying. We can take this mountain. Can I tell you, our flag spiritually is raised and we can take the mountain. Can you say amen? I said, we can take the mountain. Hallelujah. Forever and ever. Look up. Look up. They couldn't see it as long as they were looking down in the foxhole. But when they looked at the top, they were picking that mountain. There stood the American flag waving. And what a shout rang through that island. And they conquered it. Amen. They, it was a great encouragement. If you want encouragement, pick up the flag. Look at the flag. Your next mountain's coming. But just remember, you got to go through the mountains to get home. That means on your way home. You're going to face discouragement, but you're on your way home. I love that song. Don't fear the mountain, for it's the way home. Glory to God. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. I tell, uh, I tell this story quite often. Some of you have heard it more than two or three times. But when me and my brother Johnny, we happened to be home on the same time from boot camp. We had, both of us was home for 15 days. We went down south to where we used to live in St. Cloud. 
and spent about two days visiting before we had to go back into active duty. And we went by an old church of God that we went there. And the pastor told us as we was leaving, he said, I want to tell you boys a story. We were both in uniform. We didn't know where we was going to end up all together. He said, I'm going to tell you a story. We're going to sing a song. Just hold on. He said, they were pinned down. I believe it was in Japan. A machine gun's nest was, had the men pinned down. And it was just destroying the, our soldiers. And the captain or some of the platoon or the company says, can I get a volunteer to go to the top of this mountain and knock that machine gun nest or there are going to be many of us killed? He said, it's a mission that you probably won't survive, but if you just get up there enough to throw a grenade in that pillbox. And this old preacher told me and my brother, we were lost. We weren't Christians. He said, one young man, the soldier said, if you'll wait, I believe it's at 12 o'clock, I may have the time wrong. He said, I'll go. He didn't understand why, but at that hour, he gave him permission to go. Bullets flying all around him. He's dodging them. Amen. Come on. He gets to the top. He throws a grenade or whatever he needed to throw into that pillbox. Knocked the enemy out, and no more lives was lost when they took that island. And the captain said to the man, he said, why did you have to wait to that hour to go? He said, well, back home, amen, my mama told me at this hour, and he had to calculate the time distance he, she would be praying for me that hour that God would give me safe and bring me back home and I knew I could take that pill box because I had a praying mama at that same hour that was praying for me come on somebody lift your hand I believe prayer works I believe we can take the mountain I said I believe we can take the mountain I believe we can live a victorious life well praise God somebody say amen amen Amen. Give me G, one of y'all. Amen. Y'all got to help me. I, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Yeah. When I lost my flag in battle, my staff is in my hand. I'm taking it to Jesus over in the glory land. On distant land I trod, crying sinner come to God. Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Everybody. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I promised him to die. Said I'm sorry till I die. Now I'm on the battlefield. Have you promised him? Come on. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Savior, the battle is most won. The trumpet will be sounding the coming of the sun. I'll lay my armor down, take up my robe and crown, and I'll walk golden streets with my Lord. Cause I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Oh, raise your hands and praise him. I'm on the battlefield for my my flag in battle my staff is in my hand I'm taking it to Jesus over in the glory land and distance land I trod Christ sinners come to God now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord it's a battlefield brother yes, not a recreation hall for my Lord yes I'm on the battlefield for my Lord Bad 
to feel for my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I promise him that I will serve him till I die. Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Hey! Well, somebody say praise the Lord. Amen. Did you promise him? Did you serve him all the way? Then there's some battles to be fought. There used to be an old song, it's a battlefield, brother, not a recreation hall. It's a fight and not a game. Run if you want to, run if you will, but I came here to stay. <laughs> How many's come to stay until it's over? Praise the Lord. Well, praise the Lord. I was sitting there thinking sometimes, and, 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 and board members, please don't leave without getting in office for about 15 minutes. Okay? It might not even take that long. Okay? Now, not, that's not everybody that's bored. That's just board members. <laughs> Say amen. You know who you are. Amen. A while ago when it was real quiet and nobody seemed to be praising God or nothing, I thought about something old Robert Mays said. How many members Brother Robert Mays? He's passed on now to glory. But he was very comical sometime in his preaching. And I'm going to tell you where the church was at. It was a storefront church and I went to visit the revival and he was having a struggle. I mean, him trying to preach, it was just as dead, and he was exhausted trying to get the message out. So finally he said, somebody go to the piano, get a song. Well, two of the ladies, one was the pastor's wife, went to the piano, and he was still trying to get something, and they were taking their time. Finally, Robert looked back, and, I, and when he said this, honestly, I like to fell out of my seat laughing. I shouldn't have, but I couldn't help it. He looked back at them. He said, play something. Play taps or something. I, I thought, boy, that's a dead service when you want to play taps at the altar call. <laughs> my Lord. <laughs> I, I ain't... I ain't going to play taps for this service. Come on, I want you to get your hands up and praise God for a while. Hey, Amen. Good to see every one of you. Hey, Amen. He was a mess. Tenth chapter, verse 30 of St. Luke. I'm going to break this down just a little bit. My mama had an old Bible she had for years and years. I reckon she had it when she died. It was worn out. It was called, put out by the Hertel Company. About that time, uh, in the 40s and all, was, it was probably one of the number one Bibles for references and stuff. And uh, I needed a new Bible, and I went to a revival, me and Joe Berry on the South Side, and Brother Gilstrap, y'all remember Joe Gilstrap? He was selling brand new hotel Bibles. And uh, I, I borrowed $20 from Brother Joe and, and bought, probably over 50 years ago, this Bible. As you can tell, it's all torn. My first, probably thousands of sermons was preached from this old Bible. And I hadn't seen it for a while, and I was in there looking at some of the old Bibles I got on the shelf. And I seen it. Half the front cover's torn. It looks its age. I don't, but it does. And <laughs> and I looked up this scripture, and I'm gonna read it out of an old Bible I preached some of my first sermons out of. Hertel Bible, put out by the Hertel Company. St. Luke chapter 10, beginning in verse 30. And Jesus answered and said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Now listen, this is not a parable. When Jesus used to give a parable, he let it know it was a parable. When he said it was a certain man, a certain place, it was, amen, a certain man had two sons and the prodigal son. 
Listen, this, these are actual events. Because he said a certain man. Hello, it's important that you know it's not a parable, it's an actual event. A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among the thieves, who had stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him and went to him. He didn't go to the other side of the road. He went to him and bound up his wounds, poured in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence and gave it to the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay you. You see, he done been stripped of all of his money and goods. He knew he had nothing, but I'll repay whatever is spent. This, this does not cover. Hello. Amen. Verse 36. When, now, which, this is Jesus. You got a red letter edition of the Bible. Which now of these three thinkest thou was a neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? This is an easy question to answer. Come on. And he said, He that shewed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, Go and do likewise. But David Church pray. may be seated but would you back up to verse 25 and behold a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him saying master what shall I do to inherit life what shall I do to inherit eternal life and he said unto him what is written in the law how readest thou and he answered and said thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart with all thy soul and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. But he willing to justify himself. Boy, there's problems when you begin to justify yourself. Some people justify what they're doing by themselves, not by the word of God. Somebody play taps. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. But he, he willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, And who is thy neighbor? And Jesus then begins to tell the story of this man that the Bible said he fell among thieves. He didn't ask to be robbed. He didn't ask to be beaten. He didn't ask to, to be thrown in a ditch somewhere or another to die. But he fell amongst thieves. The Bible said they stripped him of his raiment. And they beat him and robbed him and left him dying. The Bible says half dead. Laying there. Couldn't get up himself. Too bad a shape to help himself. 
Amen. And a priest come along who was supposed to be the most spiritualist man in Israel. The priest. <clears throat> and he sees the man laying in the pool of blood. He sees the man dying. He sees the man without remnant. He sees him. Well, I'll just not going to touch that bloody man against the law of Moses. I'm a priest and I'm not going to go help him. I'll just make out like I didn't see him and pass on the other side. I don't even want to get near him. And Jesus is trying to get a point over here. And then come a Levite. Levite tribe was the priestly tribe where the priests come from. The Levite tribe. So he was supposed to be very religious. And he come down, and the Bible said he did. Little, he got it closer, and he looked at him. Probably just shook his head, said, "There's no hope for this man." And he walks on the other side of the road. If it had been left up to those spiritual leaders, the man would have died in a pool of blood side of the road. That Jesus is talking about. I'm going somewhere if you hang with me. Say amen. But here come a Samaritan. Now Samaritans was not liked by the Jews. They were mixed breed and, and part Jew, part Gentile. And, and the real devout Jews had nothing to do with them. You remember the woman at the well when she told Jesus, she said, why are you talking to me? You being a Jew, I'm a, I'm a Samaritan. And Jesus let her know it was no respect to person for him. So this Samaritan was not supposed to be a religious person. But he was. He was more religious than the priest and the Levite. Because when he saw the man dying in his own blood, my God, the Bible said he had compassion upon him. Can I preach for just a little while? This man rescued this man that was dying. Everybody ought to know that the good Samaritan is symbolic of Jesus. Come on, when he seen me in my sin, he seen me in a, a, a place, Brother Ray, amen, where I needed help that no preacher could help me with. My Jesus seen me in that place. Hallelujah. And I said, Jesus rescued me. <laughs> I want to tell you, if you're saved tonight, if you're here enjoying the blessings of God in your life, Jesus had to rescue you. Amen. When you were dying, in your sin. Hallelujah forever and ever. Not only did he say, you know, I, I think of them two that went by and, and they, they probably looked and give a second look. I don't want to get involved with this sinner. I don't want to get involved with this man. I don't want to get involved with him dying. I don't want to, I don't want to do, I don't put, put no clothes on him. I don't want to get involved with this situation. I, I'm telling you, but there's a man coming along that had compassion that the leave and the priest didn't have and he said I'll get involved I'll take that oil I got on my beast and I'll pour it in his wounds. Amen. I'll take the wine. Amen. They had alcohol cleansing out the wound and I'll pour in the oil and that's a healing part of the wound. I'll put my clothes on him. Hallelujah. I'll pick him up and put him on my own animal. I'll let him ride while I walk. Glory to God. Amen somebody. How many will agree with me? This, Jesus said, which one of these threes? Which one of these three was right? And he said, you better go do likewise. Don't look at the drug addict. Don't look at the alcoholic. Don't look at the pervert and say, hey, come on. I'm just going to pass by you. You're too, you're too bound in sin. We're supposed to stop. We're supposed to give them the gospel. We're supposed to give them everything we can give them to rescue them out of that ditch of sin. Amen, somebody. Well, glory. Glory. Now, this, this man is so weak. He's not able to walk. So he puts him on his own, we'll say horse, camel, whatever he had. And he said, there's a place I can take him. You better hold on now, folks. There's a place that I can take him. 
And if I give enough money at this end, I got to go. But there's a place I can take him. And I'll take care of him. And when I have to leave, I'm going to tell the man over this house, over this inn, I'm going to give him money, and you take care of him. And when I come back, if I owe you more, I'll pay you. The Bible doesn't give this Samaritan's name. It doesn't give the name of the man that was dying. Doesn't give the name of the inn or the innkeeper. But I was reading this one time and God stirred me. He said that inn represents the church. I have rescued this man. Now I'm taking him and putting him in charge of this inn. Did you know when someone gets saved, I don't care what they have done, you and I, the church, ought to take care of their spiritual needs. Come on, don't judge them. Don't judge them for what they have done. It's the church's position to take care of the lost that has come to the Lord, that has been rescued by Jesus. It's our responsibility to show them love and to show them nurturing. Some of us stay down so much we can't help nobody else for wanting somebody to help us. But a true church, amen, we're nourished the lost that Jesus has saved because at one time we were lost. At one time time we were wounded. At one time we were hopeless and helpless. But Jesus come along and he didn't pass by on the other side. But he said I'll talk to Ronnie. I'll convict Ronnie. Come on I'll take care of his wounds. I'll forgive him for anything he might have ever done. And I'll take him to the church and leave him in charge of the church. Ma! My, 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 my. Folks, when we get so wrapped up in ourselves and justify, it said here this, this lawyer justified himself. When we get so wrapped up in self, when the Lord says this is wrong or that's wrong, and we try to justify it and make it right. <laughs> You may justify it in your own eyes or in your family's eyes and even some church's eyes, but you're never justified in the eyes of God until it's under the blood of Jesus Christ. Therefore, being justified by faith, the Bible says, we have peace with God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Don't ever try to justify wrong when conviction is there telling you it is wrong. Justify. Justify. I could spend all week looking at people's faults. I didn't say sin. I said faults. I'm closing. After a while. <laughs> but the Bible says in Galatians, believe it's Galatians, brethren, ye that are spiritual. Amen. That's the key. Spiritual. I believe only spiritual people is going to heaven. Amen. I repeat that. I believe only spiritual people are going to go to heaven. He said, ye which are spiritual, if you find a brother overtaken, it didn't say a sinner. If you find a brother overtaken in a fault, not a sin, ye which are, are spiritual, restore such a one. It didn't say destroy that one. 
it says restore such a one in the spirit of humbleness or meekness. Then he said, consider yourself. At least you also be tempted. If you don't do that and all you do is can find fault with the church and people in the church, hey amen, come on, you're in the same shape as though you're finding fault with. Preach, Pastor, preach. Hey amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel a Holy Ghost streak coming down right now. It's time the church quits finding fault and get in the spiritual life going. And if somebody is in the fault, let God correct them and you restore them. Amen. Back into fellowship with God that they have lost to their faults. And the Bible says, I'm quoting scripture one by they keep coming. Amen. Listen. He said, let us lay aside every sin and weight that besets us and let us run with patience the race that is before us. How many knows we're in a race to go to heaven? Listen, a lot of people mis misinterpret this scripture and I'm going to interpret it for you. Hmm? Hello? Everybody ready? Lay aside every weight and sin. Now, he, why did he put weight in there? Like you lift a weight. Hmm? And sin. So that is saying that weight is not a sin. Like some people preach. And if you preach it that way, God bless your heart and I won't fall out with you. But what he's saying, you got something weighing you down. You got a fault that's weighing you down. You can't run this race with patience. Not only lay sin aside, lay the weight aside that's holding you back. Believe it or not, when I was a teenager, even before, I was real skinny. I was real skinny. I'm talking about real skin. At 18, I went to do a physical for the draft. Yeah, back then you had to raise 106 pounds. They ain't going to take me. But I found out I, had, I weighed as much as a Viet Cong. <laughs> Put me in 1A. But in school, I was real skinny. And I couldn't run very far. I just lose my breath. And and they made everybody run track. Y'all remember that in high school? Hmm? Where the track coach had these weights that you could put around your ankle and strap them. How many have ever done it? You know. Y'all didn't go where I went. All of we'd put them weights and you could strap them. And then you run around with them weights. And you run around, maybe run, try to run the hundred yard dash with them weights on, and they weighted you down, amen. But brother Tim, once you unstrapped or undone them and took them off, your feet felt like they were leather, feathers, amen. Now, come on, I can run faster than I ever could, amen. <clears throat> and that's what he's saying. You you weighted down where you can't run this race like you need to run it. Get off the weights and get rid of the sin. <laughs> and let's run this race. Come on, the best we know how to run it. Well, I got off on that and got cut off my text a little bit, but I'm coming back to it. Well, praise God. We don't know. I'm a priest and I'm a Levite of the tribes and... I don't know what this man done to be in this condition, but I ain't got time to mess with him. Let him die. Let him die right there. And he would have if a part Jew and part Gentile hadn't come along. And listen to what the Bible says, and I had compassion 
He just didn't feel sorry for him. He had compassion. Come on, somebody say amen. He had compassion on him. Lay down on that pew for there, shorty. I want you to get the picture. Here comes the big high priest. Here comes the priest, one of the priests. And he looks and he sees him there. Hmm, look what happened to him. I ain't going to mess with him. He's bleeding and about dead anyhow. I just get on the other side of the road and make out like I didn't see him. And then here comes the Levite. And sure enough, he should have stopped. He did stop. And he looked at him. Well, I feel sorry for you. Get on the other side of the road. Don't, don't want to be affiliated with you. I don't want to be affiliated with you. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Some of y'all looking at me like almost cross-eyed, but I feel the Holy Ghost right now. But here comes somebody. That wasn't a priest. That wasn't in the church. The Levite. Come on now. And he didn't only stop. He looked down at him. I don't even know if the man could talk. He was half dead. He was probably unconscious. He went back to his, I say to his saddle or his bag on the animal. And he got out the wine. And he began to clean. <laughs> he began to clean him up. Anybody get in the picture? He began to clean his wounds. <laughs> Where the enemy had wounded him so deep that the priest and the high priest and the new, I said, I can't, I, I, I feel sorry for him, but I don't believe I can help him. <laughs> but here is this guy. He's pouring his wine into and cleaning out his wounds that he'd been hurt so bad. <laughs> can I tell you, Jesus, will clean out your wound when you've been hurt. Come on, somebody say amen. <laughs> then he began to pour oil, soothing oil into the wounds. My, 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 my. I don't know how expensive the oil was. I don't know how expensive the wine was. It doesn't matter. He's seen somebody. He didn't just feel sorry for him. More than sorry, he had compassion. Right. God, do we ever need more compassion today in this world we're living in than we've ever needed it, I know, in my lifetime. That's right. Hmm. Come on. The United Methodist Church, beginning of a wholeness movement in America especially, I was growing up, or when I got saved, it was a powerful. They, they believed in strict living. Don't tell me we better start. Come on, somebody say amen. We better start standing for what's right. We're going to be criticized. We're going to be mocked. Come on, but we better start standing up for. We better start having a burden for the lost. Almost on a weekly basis, I meet somebody that is addicted to drugs, that is addicted to alcohol, almost on a weekly basis. Come on now. And I look at them. Not only do I feel sorry for them, I try to help them. Listen, sinners don't need to be felt sorry for. They need to have compassion from the church. Thank God some of you is with me. I said they need to have compassion and not look down on, but tell them there's a way out that they can be rescued. Like this man on the ditch was rescued. They can be rescued by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hey, man. They don't have to to be that way. I'm going to try to close with this statement. The old song says, it says this, and I'm so glad that when he found me, he didn't leave me that way. Mm. I 
I'm glad when he found me. He loved me and had mercy enough not to leave me that way in that ditch of sin. So I poured wine. It probably stung. The oil probably soothes. Yeah, see, you got a little strength, but come here. I believe he had to pick. I ain't going to try to pick you up. No <laughs> way, Jose, Jose. Amen. He, but let's just say he put his arm around and carried him. Say he had a horse. It was an animal. And he picked him up and he put him on it. Instead of him riding, he put him on it because the boy wasn't able to ride. That's right. <laughs> Ye that are spiritual. Yes. Come on, somebody say amen. And now he's walking while the wounded man's riding. Woo, glory to God. I feel the Holy Ghost. Uh, come on, while the wounded man was riding, he was walking. I want you to know Jesus will walk right beside of us. He won't leave us wounded. He can heal every wound. He can, my God, somebody say, he can break every spirit of depression. He can break every spirit of bondage. He can break it. He won't lead you that way. He'll pick you up and he'll walk side of you. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every one of us probably has read the, the, the poem Footprints in the Sand. Come on. There's a picture of the footprints in the sand. And there's two. There, there's four footprints. And then, then it goes to two footprints and then back to four. And somebody asks us, what does that mean? When I see it, talk to Jesus. Said, what does it mean when I see the four and then I see the two? He said, well, the four is when I'm walking by you. The two is when I'm carrying you. Come on. I want you to know Jesus. Jesus can carry you. I said, Jesus can carry you. I said, Jesus can carry you. Thank God we can have a church that we can carry them to, that we can tell them, and we can moon them and say, you might have faults, but we're going to pray that God will help you run this race with patience. Y'all come to the music a minute. Thank you, Jesus. There'll be somebody you'll meet this week. I, I wouldn't be scared to say every one of you is going to meet somebody Amen. that is bound yes, and wounded and left without mercy of the world. Amen. Amen. Hmm. Glory to God. Glory to God. What you going to do? Well, I know you're in trouble. I know you're addicted. I know you're doing this and that and the other and sin. I, I know that, and I, I kind of feel sorry for you. We ain't got time to mess with you. I ain't got time to witness to you. I ain't got time to tell you about a man that can pull you out of that ditch. But how many of us will walk by? on the other side because we don't want to be identified with the dying. Whew. I don't want to make you feel bad. I just want to encourage you. God didn't just save you to speak in tongues and shout. That's just one of the benefits. God saved you to be a witness for him. That's the sole purpose that he died on the cross of Calvary. That's the purpose he saved your soul by the cleansing of his blood for you to be a witness. He told the disciples before he went back up into heaven, he said, you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, which is local, Judea, which is surrounding county, so to speak, we put in our term, in the uttermost part of the world. That's what I've saved you for. And that's what you must be doing. He told the lawyer, give him this story that justified himself. And the lawyer said, well, you know, when he got through, he was still talking to the lawyer. 
And he said, this you've got to do. If you believe that last man was justified more than the others, quit justifying yourself. Amen. Quit finding fault. Amen. There's some scripture in the Bible. You know, did I, I look to a lot of times. You see, I run all kind of people. You will be surprised. Huh? But anyhow, Jesus said, I'm not going to put a pig on Brenda, she's my wife. She gets mad at me, it won't, it'll matter, but she'll over it. She's over it a lot in 50 years. Look here, look here, woman. Did you know you got a speck of sawdust in your eye? I see it. Finger off. Gonna break that finger. Let me get something and some tweezers or something and try to get that speck out of your eye. Yeah, come on. Quit turning your head. I'll blind you if you keep turning your head. I just want to get the speck out. Jesus said, don't. Don't try to get that speck out when you got a saw beam in your own eyes. You, I'm in worse shape than Brenda is, is what he's saying. And I ain't got the right to try to get that out of her eye when I got something blind in my whole eyes. I, got a, I ain't got a speck, I got a saw beam. Or log. Whatever you want to call it, Sister Brenda. <laughs> In your eye. Wow. You, I run people that find fault with everything and everybody. And, they, they, and, and the biggest fault is they're finding fault. They got a, you got a beam trying to take a speck out of somebody else's eye. And that's all they can think about. And that means they're in more shape than the one they're trying to help. Boy, wouldn't y'all like to pastor a while. Amen. Come on now. But you got to love everybody. And Brother Mitch, when there, you find someone that is addicted, don't say, I ain't got time for them. I don't want to mess with them. That's the one we need to stop and say, sin has wounded you and it's going to kill you if you don't let Jesus take you, amen, by the hand and lead you to the bleeding side of Calvary. Somebody say, amen. This is our duty not to put them down, not to find fault with them. Come on, we know their faults, but it's our duty not to go to the other side of the road. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. It's our duty to stop and give them the word and tell them that Jesus can bring them out. Everybody says, Amen. Amen. We sometimes forget what Jesus said, that my strength is perfected in your weaknesses. And God blessed me one day, Brother Tim, with a revelation what that really meant. And I ain't gonna say nothing else. He said, I'm just gonna say, Ronnie, you know what I mean? It means my strength is perfected in your weakness. That means what you're too weak to do, even though you tried and you're too weak to do, if you call on me, my strength will do it for you. Therefore, it's not your strength, it's my strength. And that's when my strength is perfected because I've done something for you you couldn't do for yourself. Right. <laughs> His strength is sufficient to save every uh, addict, alcoholic, pervert in this land. His strength is sufficient to deliver a pornography, cocaine, meth, marijuana, nicotine. Y'all don't look at me funny. I said, there's not a thing that Jesus don't have the strength to over help you to be an overcomer of. Quit justifying it and get it right with God and let his strength do what you don't have the strength to do. Amen. Amen. Y'all got a song where I'm going to sing. Sing something to go along with this. 
I know this ain't been a shouting message. Hmm. But I feel as anointed to preach as I do a, a shouting message. Hello. Come on now. I'm telling you, it's our duty to have compassion upon the lost. I'm not going to talk to her. I'm not going to talk to him. I'm not going to witness to them. I know they're down. I know they're dying. But it is my responsibility, Brother Chad, as a Christian, to reach down, lift him up. Would you stand? A song to go with this. song, Fanny Mae Crosby come a blind woman and she wrote some of the old songs over a hundred years ago. She's probably been dead right a hundred years if not. But the story behind this song, she was in a prison preaching, testifying, witnessing. And they said as they sh she started to leave, there was a prisoner out and said sister would you pray that the Lord won't pass me by I need help she penned the words of this song don't pass me by don't pass the wounded one by just cause they're a lower class or they've got themselves in the ditch don't pass by on the other side of the road and just say, I feel sorry for them. Have compassion. Hallelujah, Jesus. While they're going to hell, have compassion on them. Y'all sing it one more time. We'll give an altar service. in this building you were rescued if you're saved you wasn't too good to get saved you got saved because you was no good amen somebody 
I want everybody in this building, if you would, come down that aisle singing this song and pray with Brother Ronnie, every one of us. Pass me not. Come on, everybody, come and pray with us.
for about two days. Y'all know what gift God's given me, and I'm not going to try to explain it. But he showed me that someone, and I'm, I don't say it's a migraine, but I see a band around this part of your head, and it hurts. It's almost like a band tightening around this part of your head. If you want to be healed, step forward right now. Step forward right now. Is that you? Anybody else? Come on. I'm not going to wait long. Come on now. Just a tightness around the top of your head. Decide. Jesus is going to hear you. This is only two days. I keep seeing it. Keep seeing it. She's saying that he's going to hear you. I'm just waiting to see if somebody else wants to come. Stretch your hands this way. Sister Brenda. Priest and Levi came down that way. They pressed on the other side. I thought my life was through to so God sent me you And you slipped your hand into mine A selfish for me Taking the time to rescue one like me. Oh, you see, my last hope was gone till you came along. And you bound up my wounds carefully. Without one second thought, you looked past my faults. And there you saw my needs. I wouldn't be here today as you not came my way. Thank you for Come taking on. the time for me. Hallelujah. I know you are busy with so much to do. You slipped your own plans aside. Oh, unselfishly, you nailed her by me. And you poured in the oil and the wine. For as long as I live, I'll never forget how you chose to be my friend. Oh, and one day in heaven, I like to sit down and tell you all over again. Thank you for taking the time to rescue one like me. Glory. Oh, you see, my last hope was gone till you came along. And you bound up my wounds carefully. Without one second thought, you looked past my faults. There you saw my needs. I wouldn't be here today as you not came my way. Thank you for taking the time for me.